Hi, I'm Rick Saylor. I'm an elder in the Great Plains Conference. I'm Warren Shumming, and I'm an associate member of the Great Plains Annual Conference. I'm Kurt Cooper, and I'm a deacon. I'm Kathy Symes. I'm an associate member of the Witches Underneath the Local Pastors. I'm Ashley Prescott Barlow Thompson, and I'm a deacon. Deacon! I'm Wendy Muller Seib. I'm a church planter at the United Methodist Church at the Well. I'm Lori Schwilling, and I'm an associate member in the Great Plains Annual Conference. I'm Courtney Fowler, conference lay leader. First, I believe to be called to be an elder in the United Methodist Church, like all other calls, is a great honor and privilege and responsibility. A deacon is ordained to word and service, compassion and justice, and a deacon is the bridge from the local church to the world. I just like to think of myself as a guardian of the sacraments and the leader, the theological leader in the local congregation. So the proclamation of the word both word in, in the spoken word, in the understanding of the scripture, and how we live out the scripture, not just in word, but in deed. I really believe it's a lay person's job to make the church as welcoming and hospitable and as a wonderful place to worship and visit as can be. Elders are called to focus on the order of the church and keep the church alive for generations to come. And deacons, in my opinion, are called to focus on where the kingdom is going and how we can follow suit. I think a call is an invitation. I think it's an invitation from God to be a part of what God is doing in the world in a way that perhaps you hadn't thought of before. I have finally accepted that call from God, that nudging, that pushing, that um, feeling that I needed to do just more. I would, I would often go into these churches and, and, and serve these churches and a lot of people kept telling me, you know, you've got some gifts and graces there you ought to explore. And, and as I prayed about it and thought about it, uh, some doors opened. There was a longing, I think, in, in my, my heart and my soul for, for something more. It just was one affirmation after another from people who had gone before me and people who were even outside of my denomination um, through seminary saying, when do you, we really feel like you're called. We're, you're called to the pastoral role and you're called to be an elder in the Methodist Church. And, and so it was God using a lot of people saying to me, this is the way, Wendy, you should walk in it. I felt the call to ministry, believe it or not, when I was 13 years old. And um, through my experiences in the life of the church, um, I was raised in the church. I always had this great sense of mystery about the pulpit and about the word and about the preacher. And so um, that seed was planted in me about, well, what does it mean to preach? What, how is the scripture the word? I've always felt I had the gift and graces to uh, teach. And so um, I love teaching. And when I heard about the deacon ministry and that deacons use their specialized ministries to serve, I knew that that's where I needed to be, that I was called to be a deacon. I think that God's calling all of us, regardless of our ordination or if we're a lay person, to love God, love our neighbor, and love ourselves. And as we think about if we're called to professional ministry, to ordination as elder or deacon, I think that an important discernment point is, am I called to continuing the beauty that is the church? There are many ways. One is through prayer. One is through reading scripture. Another is by talking to other people that are in ministry to guide and direct you. Also, um, knowing what your, your gifts are and what your talents are and talking to someone and how you can use those gifts and graces to serve God. I had a professor in seminary say to me, I hear seminary students ask the question all the time, what is God calling me to do? What is God calling me to do? And she said the question is really the wrong question. The question we should be asking is, what is the community of faith saying to me about where God has gifted me and where God is at work in my life and how I can best serve the church and the world? For myself, uh, my parents were both 
um, ministerial in their careers. My dad served as an elder in the United Methodist Church and my mom was a Christian educator. And so family played a great deal in shaping my call to ministry and helping me discern the area I wanted to be in for as far as ministry. I mean, first of all, to pay attention to your God-given spirit, you know, whether it's something that just feels right can be the call, or whether it's just something that dis, uh, discombobulates you, that puts you a little bit on edge, maybe that's the way God calls. But pay attention to what your spirit's telling you first, you know, and then to talk about it with other people. Get the feedback from friends, get feedback from colleagues, get feedback from your local church. Um, and then as you enter the process, um, all along the way you'll be giving opportunities to grow and to explore, um, all the way from your own God-given personality, um, different inventories, different ways of being in group. And that constant feedback is another way to, to affirm your call.